Welcome to today's Research Business Daily Report where we learn what went wrong with the most erroneous high-profile European poll from 2015. And then there are three truly unique research innovations that we want you to know about that became public late last week. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by RFL Communications, the research industry's premier news and insight source. And we will be releasing our second annual Global Top 50 Research Organization list later this month. More about that at the end of today's report. After British pollsters completely miscalled the 2015 UK parliamentary elections, the British Polling Council studied how and why the pollsters as a group fell so short. BPC compared polling and results from 1997 and 2001 with 2015, quote, and in terms of statistical measure of error, it found there wasn't a big difference. University of Southampton professor of research methodology Patrick Sturgis, who led the BPC study, explained that after eliminating postal voting, voter registration, overseas voters, question wording, turnout weighting, interview modes, and late voter swings and deliberate misreporting as potential causes for the 2015 polling inaccuracies, everything pointed to one all too familiar issue, non-representative sampling. And on top of it, Sturgis made note of the fragility of polling methodology. He stated, quote, the pollsters make a lot of strong assumptions. Hence, our amazement that they get as close as they do as often as they do. That is not exactly a ringing endorsement of polling from a true expert in the field. Next, I was pleased to hear of several research innovations late last week before the Memorial Day holiday that seemed extremely worth the attention of you, our RBDR viewers. Start with 20th Television and 4C, a data science and media technology company who, that are partnering on something called 4C Advertising Analytics. It delivers comprehensive media measurement plus the ability to quantify consumer response from brand integrations and that allows sponsor, excuse me, sponsorships to be studied as to how well they perform. Also to improve targeted audience delivery and optimize brand activations. It is also said to measure social media effectiveness. Next, Qualtrics acquired data startup StatWing, which Qualtrics claims will allow it to help organizations and their do-it-yourself research, quote, to dig deeper, be more predictive, and increasingly data-driven, end of quote. Qualtrics co-founder and CEO Ryan Smith said this new combination will allow users to reach new levels of insight with simplicity that enables anyone to apply it. By the way, this is Qualtrics' first acquisition, and Smith promises it will be followed by many more. And finally, data management platform Crux and Servata are meshing their respective systems so that advertisers can interview consumers online before an ad campaign launches and after it begins running. This will combine traditional market research with automated advertising buying and real-time targeted tweaking. Explain Servata CEO Chris Kelly, quote, market research teams can now survey the same segments that their advertising colleagues already use for ad buys. And added Crux CEO Tom Chavez, marketers can use our system to perform sophisticated data science analysis on enormous data sets to find deep insights into consumers and campaigns. That's your Research Business Daily Report. We've been sponsored by RFL Communications, the research industry's premier news and insight source. Coming in June from RFL, the second annual Global Top 50 Market Research Organizations listing. We believe that when you look at the research industry and try to assess where it is and who are the factors that are really driving it, well, it is far more than just research agencies, which has been the traditional way to look at our business. What about non-traditional research organizations, including those that help collect social media data? 
text analytics data and the like. Well, we're accounting for them. And what about the research industry's most important suppliers without whose assistance a huge void would be created that would, at least in the short term, put a crimp in research efficiency and productivity? They are also on our list. Several differentiations that you will notice when the RFL Global Top 50 Research Organizations becomes public have just been reviewed by me, but there are more and you'll find them when the report is issued. And we will highlight its arrival here on RBDR. Have a great research day and we'll see you back here tomorrow.